Hello and welcome to this Premiere Pro Basics tutorial in which we're going to have a quick look at something that's just been released at NAB, CS Next. So this is not Premiere Pro CS 6, this is the next iteration which has just been released and we're allowed to talk about it now, we're allowed to blog about it and do the odd tutorial. Now there is a wonderful new feature in this new version of Premiere Pro that is going to allow us to synchronize multiple cameras by using the timecode, in points, out points, or even, and what we're going to do, via the audio. There's also a slightly different workflow when it comes to doing a multiple camera edit. And I just want to run through that with you, show you a few of the features, just so that you know what you're doing when you get to CS Next, when you get the upgrade, if you've got Creative Cloud, and you're saying, OK, how do I do a multi-camera edit? Now, I did a talk the other day and two cameras were used. I've got one that was close, and for that I used a Ninja 2, which just took the whole talk as one file. However, the other camera, which was at a medium distance, was using a Ninja 1, and the Ninja 1 breaks it up into four gig sections. And as you can see, I've got a whole bunch of different sections. So these are independent files that just flow one on from the other, but they've all got audio associated with them, and they should synchronize with this one. Now you could see this as being a whole bunch of different cameras because the effect is going to be the same. What I'm going to ask Premiere Pro to do is look at the audio of one of these and synchronize all of these so that they're all inside Premiere Pro completely synchronized via the audio so that they all match perfectly. Now these ones should therefore just literally go one after the other after the other without any overlap. But if there were other cameras and other bits and pieces, Premiere Pro is just going to synchronize a lot together. And this is an incredible time saver, particularly if you don't have time code to work with and other bits and pieces to synchronize. Even if, in fact, if you've got other footage, as long as the footage has got audio, Premiere Pro is going to be able to synchronize it. So let's go to Premiere Pro and show you how I'm going to do this. So this is Premiere Pro CS Next, and you're going to see some other changes in the timeline and what have you. So the first thing we're going to do is create a new bin. So go down to New Bin, and I'm going to call this my footage. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all my footage inside this bin. So I'm going to open this bin in place. It would be Control or Command double click, standard practice. Open that in place. And now I'm going to import my media that I want to synchronize into this bin. So Command I or Control I or just double click to get the import dialog window. And then all I need to do is select the folders that I want so it's close so it's just these ones here so select all of those I want to bring in click open and they're all going to be imported into Premiere Pro okay these are all ProRes files and you can see they're all in there and I've got the close one and then I've got all the other ones which are the medium distance which are in fact one file see it's quite a long talk I went on for quite a long time right now I'm going to go up a layer and here is the actual folder so what I need to do is I need to right click on the bin with the footage in. So when I right click on the bin, notice I get a new option, create multi-camera source sequence. And when I click on that, I get a new dialog box, the create multi-camera source sequence dialog box. Call the project whatever you want and notice the synchronization options by in points, by out points, by time code. And you notice you've got time code options here. Or alternatively, and what I want to show you, is by audio and what Premiere Pro is going to do is going to go along and it's going to listen to all the audio and line the clips up based on the audio on the clips obviously if you haven't got any audio it can't line it up but even on a camera phone you have audio and you can line them all up if you need to offset your audio you can offset it here notice that it moves process clips to a new bin so if you were working with say time code and some of those clips didn't have time code when you actually did this, all the clips that it did include that did have timecode would have been moved to the processed bin, which is a new bin it will create when it's finished. So you know which clips have been processed and which clips haven't been processed, which is, again, a really useful feature. And then looking at the audio settings, the sequence settings, we're going to use camera one. OK, and I'm just going to click OK, and I'm going to leave this real time. So you can see how long those clips were, and you can see how long it's actually going to take. So I'm going to click OK and just let it run. The machine I'm using is a uh, quad-core, uh, an, an i7 machine. It's got quite a lot of RAM, and it's got a, a reasonably decent video card, but it is actually a laptop, what I'm using here. Quite a high-spec laptop, so you can just get an idea for the speed of how long it's going to take.
So it's working through. Processing the clips. And that's it. It's done. That was real time. I didn't interfere with that in any way, shape or form. So if I now open the footage folder here, you'll see that I've got two things. I've actually got created a multi-camera sequence here. And I've got all the clips that have been processed moved into the processed clips bin. And that's where all the clips are now. So that I know that they have all been included. Any that had not been processed, say they didn't have audio with them, would have been left in here for me to synchronize manually at some other point. Now, all you need to do to carry on is right-click on this and create new sequence from clip, and you can actually get into the editing, which we'll do in a minute. However, you might want to tidy things up beforehand. To open this, you can't double-click it. You do need to right-click on it and choose the option Open in Timeline. And when you click Open in Timeline, there it all is. Now, I'm going to zoom right out, and I'm going to maximize this panel, and you'll see that these are all the clips lined up. Now, if there were truly... 11 cameras involved here then what would have happened is they'd have all been lined up on separate tracks so that you can easily work through them but in this particular instance seeing this is actually one camera but the files have all been recorded in four gig chunks it has seen them as individual cameras and still lined up the audio perfectly and we'll have a little look in a second to check how perfect that is but if I go between these different items so if I use the jump and down arrows you'll see that you can see how closely matched we are. However, watch what happens. Jump and down, it seems to shoot to the end. And if it's shooting to the end like that and you're not going between the individual clips, remember you have to hold the shift key to actually go between the individual clips. And as I go between them, you can see that there are no gaps, that this is a perfect setup. It's worked perfectly. It's synchronized it based on the audio. So I've had to do nothing. If I was doing this any other way, I'd have had to have taken all these clips and moved them together and then done a synchronization trying to move all the clips, which would have been quite difficult to do. However, if you do have this and you need to move them in, all you simply need to do is make sure that Snaps is turned on. And when Snap is turned on, then click away so that none of them are selected, then grab a clip, pull it down, make sure you've got that black arrow. Can't quite see it on that one, but if I click here, you've got that black line just showing you that you're stayed snapped. And again, I'm doing this one, stayed snapped, just pulling them all down. The reason that I'm moving them all to the same channel is because each one of these would, will represent a different channel choice to watch if I left them in multicam. So I actually only need two cameras, but I would have 11 cameras if I left them here, of which some would only show for this short period of time. Seeing I want them to be continuous, in my particular instance, it actually makes a lot more sense to bring them down. Now... The general rule with audio is that in a multi-camera audio, whatever is in track one is the channel that you're going to hear. But notice that the tracks look different. Track headers have been changed. To open and close a track header, you simply double click in this area here to open and close. And you'll see that you've got different options. So we can lock the channel and we can toggle target settings so we can target tracks by targeting the header here. We've got the track name, we've got sync lock, we've got the toggle visibility on and off. But you can customize these by simply right-clicking on the track header. You can rename the track header. So I could call this my cam uh, medium or, or medium, medium view. And alternatively, you can right-click on them and go down to the customization tab. So it says customize. And you can decide what you're going to add in or take away. So you can say get rid of toggle sync lock, change the track name. You can have the navigators or you can get rid of the navigators so if you want to take them away get rid of them you can do that or you can just reset it and click OK the same is true of audio by the way you want to see the audio channel you can double click there's the audio channel and then you can right click and you can customize that and you can decide what you're going to add and what you're going to take away what suits you one of the nice little options that I like is this one that says track meter 
when you play click track meter you don't click on it you drag it and drop it where you want it to be I'm going to put it just there so I've got a track meter just here and if I click OK when I play through you can actually see that you can monitor the track itself it's gone on all the headers associated with audio now I happen to know that the audio track that I want is this particular one here audio one so to get rid of all these other ones that I don't want I'm just gonna pull these up like this so I can see them all click away so nothing is selected then hold the alt key and make sure that I draw around everything that I want to get rid of so it's all selected and then simply hit delete and that's the only channel that I want I've left a couple here so hold the alt key select those hit delete then to get rid of the tracks that I don't like or don't want, right click, delete tracks, and then choose delete video tracks, all empty tracks, delete audio tracks, all empty tracks, click OK, they've all gone. We can move this back to the middle, the middle and we can then toggle the panel. If you don't remember how to toggle the panel for Mac users, it is the tilde key. And for PC users, it's different in the US and the UK. It could be the hash key. In the UK keyboard, it's what I call the at key or the, the accent key. Now, at the moment, these are all open. What if you want to open and close tracks? Obviously, you can double click to, to shut tracks and open tracks however you like. There is a keyboard shortcut, which is the shift key. And then you hit what would be the equals, which will open them all up. And holding shift and then the key to the left of it, the, the negative key or the underlying key, that toggles them back down. So to open the tracks up and close them back down, it's the shift equals and minus key. Okay, so I'm going to toggle those back down. And now I'm ready to get into my multi-camera edit. But I can't do it with this sequence. What you need to do is go in and trim bits and pieces. So I might not start at the beginning and I might start somewhere else. But, but that will do for what we want to do. You'll actually notice on this particular one that I've actually got some space here. So what I might actually say is I don't want to start. This is my bald head. I don't actually want to start till, let's just zoom out a little bit, so I'm just coming up here. So if I started there, I could actually trim those particular tracks. And uh, if I wanted, I could right click and ripple delete and get to the end and do the same. But the point is you right click on the multicam sequence and you go new sequence from clip. This is your multicam sequence. Now, um, how do I then get into the multicam? How do I then sort it out? I'm just going to turn the audio off for these channels. We don't need to hear the audio. So I just click the mute button so we can't hear anything. So how do I get in to edit it? Previously, what we would do is we'd go to Windows and we'd look for the, the, the multi-camera mixer, but it's not there anymore. It's been moved. And to find it, you need to go to this little button here, which is the settings option on your program monitor. I'm actually going to expand mine out a bit. And when I go to the settings, notice I've got one that says multi-camera. When I click on multi-camera, then I've got my cameras accessible and when I hit play and I start switching between my cameras, I'll start to create the edit. So I'm just going to expand that track so we can actually see this. And we know that the, the number keys on the ordinary keyboard, so I've only got two cameras, so one and two will just switch between the two of them. Okay, so if I now hit the space bar to play and I go between the two, notice it's red now saying I've done a change, go back, I've done another change. I've done another change, I've done another change, just going to hit stop, I'm going to hit stop, I can see down here in the timeline, I'll just zoom in a bit so you can see them, there are the cuts, ready to go, in much the same way we'd have done it before. So it's actually a better workflow, it takes a little bit of working out, and certainly the ability to be able to synchronise your clips based on their audio with a right click option, and bearing in mind that was a, I don't know, I think I went on for 48 minutes odd, Bearing in mind that it managed to synchronize the audio for these multiple clips over that period of time in such a short period of time was really powerful. So when it comes out, you'll know how to get on and do multi-camera editing. And if you don't have time coding, you're just working with audio, you'll see that you have the ability to be able to synchronize them really fast. My name's Andrew Davis, and thanks for watching.